So I did what I try hard never to do on this show, and I was rude. I called him a moron, and then I modified that word with a vulgar, vulgar Anglo-Saxon term that is also intelligible in Dutch. Tucker Carlson has become one of the most influential voices in America's cultural debate, especially surrounding what he calls woke ideology. As the host of Tucker Carlson Tonight on Fox News, his sharp critiques of progressive movements have garnered him millions of nightly viewers, propelling him to the center of the nation's most divisive cultural conversations. Tucker Carlson, over the past few years, has cemented his role as a leading figure in America's culture wars, becoming an essential voice for conservative values, especially in the debate over what he calls woke ideology. His nightly show Tucker Carlson Tonight on Fox News draws millions of viewers, making it one of the most watched cable news programs, but his influence goes far beyond just television ratings. Carlson has managed to tap into a deep vein of dissatisfaction and anxiety within a large segment of the American population, particularly among those who feel alienated or threatened by the rapid cultural and social changes that have swept the nation over the last decade. At the heart of his commentary is a critique of woke culture, a term that has become a lightning rod for broader discussions around identity politics, social justice movements, and the direction of American society. But how did Carlson rise to such prominence? And why does his particular brand of cultural commentary resonate so strongly with his audience? To understand Carlson's influence, we must first look at his background. Carlson has long been a fixture in conservative media, but it wasn't until he took over his primetime spot on Fox News that he truly found his voice as a cultural commentator. What sets Carlson apart from many of his peers is his ability to blend traditional conservative concerns, such as opposition to big government or support for free markets, with an astute and often scathing critique of contemporary culture. Carlson's focus on cultural issues, especially the rise of what he calls wokeism, has helped him stand out in the crowded world of cable news and has made him a significant player in America's broader cultural debates. For Carlson, woke has become a catch-all term for a wide range of social and political movements that he sees as fundamentally undermining American values. These movements include everything from efforts to promote racial equality and LGBTQ plus rights to corporate initiatives around diversity and inclusion. One of the key aspects of Carlson's critique of woke culture is his focus on how it permeates not just politics but everyday life. In his view, wokeism is not limited to universities or activist groups. It has infiltrated everything from entertainment to corporate America. Carlson frequently highlights examples of companies or brands that he believes are embracing woke messaging at the expense of their traditional values or customer base. A recent and widely discussed example was his criticism of M&Ms. Earlier this year, the candy brand announced a redesign of its iconic characters, opting for more inclusive designs, such as swapping the female character's high heels for sneakers. What might have seemed like a light-hearted marketing move became, in Carlson's view, an emblem of the larger problem with corporate virtue signaling. He criticized M&Ms for caving to progressive pressure, accusing the brand of using woke messaging to push a political agenda. To many of his supporters, this critique resonated because it spoke to a broader frustration with what they see as corporate America abandoning traditional values in favor of progressive social justice causes. But Carlson's critique of corporate wokeism goes far beyond candy characters. He has also taken aim at larger corporations like Disney, which he accuses of promoting progressive values in their movies and television shows, particularly around issues of race, gender, and sexuality. Carlson's criticism of Disney is part of a broader argument he has made about the entertainment industry, which he believes is increasingly dominated by left-wing values. To Carlson, companies like Disney are not simply offering entertainment, they are actively pushing a political agenda that seeks to indoctrinate children and undermine traditional family structures. His attacks on Disney and similar companies are part of a larger narrative he promotes about the dangers of cultural change and the need to preserve traditional American values in the face of what he sees as an aggressive and overreaching progressive movement. Carlson's critique of woke culture 
is not limited to the corporate world, however. He also frequently takes aim at the broader social and political movements that have emerged in recent years, particularly around issues of race and gender. For example, Carlson has been a vocal critic of the Black Lives Matter movement, which he sees as promoting a divisive and destructive view of race relations in America. He has argued that BLM and similar movements are not about achieving equality, but about tearing down American institutions and sowing division among different racial and ethnic groups. In his view, these movements are part of a broader effort to undermine American values and promote a radical left-wing agenda that is hostile to traditional concepts of law, order, and personal responsibility. Similarly, Carlson has been highly critical of movements around gender identity, particularly efforts to promote transgender rights. He frequently argues that these movements are pushing an extreme and harmful ideology that is confusing children and undermining the biological realities of sex and gender. Carlson's critiques of gender politics are often framed as a defense of free speech and personal freedom, as he argues that those who challenge the progressive orthodoxy around these issues are often silenced or marginalized. In Carlson's view, the rise of woke culture represents a serious threat to free speech and intellectual diversity, as those who dissent from the dominant cultural narrative are increasingly ostracized and punished whether through social media shaming or professional consequences. This brings us to one of the central themes of Carlson's commentary, the idea that woke culture represents a fundamental attack on free speech and personal freedom. For Carlson and his supporters, the rise of identity politics and social justice movements is not just a cultural shift. It is a form of censorship that seeks to silence dissent and impose a rigid ideological conformity on society. Carlson frequently frames his critique of wokeism as a defense of free speech, arguing that those who challenge the progressive consensus on issues like race, gender, and sexuality are often punished for their views. He presents himself as a champion of those who feel marginalized or silenced by the dominance of progressive ideology in the media, academia, and corporate America. But Carlson's critics argue that his rhetoric is not really about defending free speech. It is about promoting division and stoking fear. They accuse Carlson of using the term woke as a way to demonize progressive movements and cast any effort to address issues of inequality or injustice as part of a dangerous left-wing agenda. In their view, Carlson's attacks on wokeism are a way of perpetuating the status quo and resisting necessary social progress on issues like racial equality, LGBTQ plus rights, and gender inclusion. They argue that Carlson's focus on cultural issues is designed to distract from larger systemic problems and to stoke resentment among his viewers, particularly white, middle-class Americans who feel threatened by the rapid pace of social change. One of the key criticisms of Carlson's rhetoric is that it tends to reduce complex social and political issues to simplistic and often exaggerated terms. For example, his attacks on woke Brands like M&M's or Disney often focus on trivial or symbolic issues, such as the redesign of a character or the inclusion of diverse actors in a film. Critics argue that these issues are hardly the existential threats to American society that Carlson makes them out to be, and that his focus on them is more about stirring up outrage than engaging in a serious discussion about cultural change. They accuse Carlson of using cultural flashpoints as a way to mobilize his base and stoke fears about the decline of traditional values without offering any real solutions to the challenges facing modern America. Despite these criticisms, Carlson's message continues to resonate with a large segment of the American population. For many of his viewers, Carlson's critiques of wokeism offer a way to articulate their discomfort with the pace of cultural change and their sense that traditional American values are under attack.